Well, hello from Canada. You know, it's a good thing I had the, uh, I use a uh, filter, UV filter, because uh, I think I'm s some sparks gone on it, and uh, those sparks would have gotten on my lens and permanently damaged my lens, so this way I can just replace the, I don't know, $15 filter. If you guys didn't know, this is Patch, one of the most amazing dogs ever. She loves to go for golf cart rides. Um, for the past several days, we haven't made a video besides the uh, racing in the school bus. Um, reason being, this uh, water came from heavy rains. Apparently, June is like super rainy up here. And so, yeah, I've just been kind of ducking out, hiding from the rain. The, uh, the tarp totally broke all the corners of it and there's like a massive pool of water <laughs> massive pool of water so anyways um, I picked up this at the truck junkyard this at the truck junkyard and also anyone out there ever have a problem with their fuel gauge um, I replaced that part and then of course badge fixed my repair because I didn't install it correctly apparently there's only one way to do it but um, I'm gonna try and find the old piece. I think I tossed it out. But it's right on top of the gas tank. And you just unscrew it. And I ripped one off of a junked bus and reinstalled. And now it works right. Uh, today I'm gonna be grinding the floors. I know there's a couple little holes. There's a there's a hole peeking through there, so I'm gonna redo that. Grind all those things down. And uh, badge, what are you working on? I am doing the last switches we got, uh, we got some heater switches to move. Yep. And what else was it? The clip lights we done. Well, I'm going to show you that in a minute. What we did to that. It's gonna. It's kind of ingenious and it works awesome. We're getting rid of this whole panel. So when I'm done today, this whole panel will <laughs> chucked in the garbage. <laughs> and yes, all the wires will be cut off. So that's and so what we're doing is taking the switches from this side. We move the heat, mirror heat to here, and we're going to move all the heater switches over to here. But I got to leave two here for the veggie oil system. So we're going to move the three heater switches here, and then um, that'll be all done. I want to get all this done before Michael gets back, and that'll be all done. The wiring's all done in the back, and then I'll show you what we're doing out here. This is, you'll love this. <laughs> You thought I was an asshole before, you'll love this one. <laughs> also, um, uh, over on the side part, when we put it back, uh, that's I'm going to have a little uh, radio uh, on the side there with GPS. In the, uh, I'm getting a, the similar one that I had last time, which has speed limit warning. Boy, oh boy, is that handy. Um, you can basically never get a ticket if you pay attention to it because it'll say speed limit is 45 or um, once you cross over last time I was in Canada on the island it told me speed limits in kilometers too so that was super handy I know somebody out there thinks it's handy I know it could be annoying too if you're constantly speeding but in a big bus you, know, you definitely don't want to be speeding around town and I know a lot of you guys who are doing school buses might see this and uh, be a little intimidated, but um, bad. This is virtually unhooked. This is all virtually unhooked. There's not very many here that are working anymore. This is all the bus systems. So the only thing we got in there really is the fans, the clearance lights, the heaters, and stuff like that. This is the main truck harness, which they don't touch, thank God, for small miracles. So now... Everybody, this is an ingenious, you guys will just love it. But anyway, up in Canada we have to have daytime running lights and they come with all kinds of stupid ideas. So this is a, one that works really good. This is what they call a Bosch relay. And I'm going to try to go slow for you, Sue, because I know you concentrate on all this stuff. So you see the numbers. There's 30, 85, 86, 87A, and 87. Power goes in on 30 this one and it comes out if there's power going to the solenoid it comes out on 87 
If you don't have the solenoid turned on, you can get power out at 87A. So that means that if you don't have no power on, you can put power through 87A. As soon as you start up the ignition, you get a power wire there. It, op it opens the solenoid and, it, and, and it'll turn it off. It's kind of ingenious. Just think about it and you'll figure it out real quick. 85 and 86, it doesn't matter where they go. That's what triggers the solenoid. So it doesn't matter what way you put them on. They're both made to ground. So it doesn't matter. You can put the power on 85. You can put the power on 86. You can put the ground on 85. You can put the ground on 86. It doesn't matter. That controls the on and off of the solenoid. Power. Normally closed power. Normally open power. Now, where we've done this is in Canada we have daytime running lights and Jack wants his lights on all the time. So what we're going to do is take the two... Um, fuses out of here which is um, F1 and F2 and that's the power feed for the ignition for the headlight switch and the marker lights right so we're going to take those two wires on and pull them out of there and put a relay in them one relay to control both of them so when he turns his key on and starts the bus it's going to send power to the relay turn the relay on turn his lights on yes we do have an override the headlight switch has to be on for this. So you leave the headlight switch on, start it up, turn the key off, the lights go out. I know it's ingenious. I know, I know. <laughs> Send all your money to us. We'll take it. But that's what we're going to do. I've run this system for almost 30 years, and it works perfect. So what we're going to do is, like, one is the power wire, and the other one is the feed wire. So we're going to take the power wire out, put it through the Bosch relay, on the 30 side and then we're going to put it back through on 87 so it's just the sweetest thing going okay now the other electrical part is this here we're just keeping it here this is basically unhooked it's all basically gone so we got to cut the wires out of there we have a you see that I know um, Z Max will be seeing this but we do have a buzzer in here it's disconnected but we will take all the wires out of it this here is disconnected. Almost all the bus stuff, like the emergency stuff, is all disconnected. All the wires are cut out and everything. Now this plug here you're going to see is saying, what the hell? He's got his dome lights in that. And that's right. These are all the dome light wires and the power wires, right? These, the purple wire, if you want to know for a bus, is uh, dash lights. And this is a ground. But jacks and mike are going to run their own wire so they say no pull them out so i did they're going to be right here we're going to tape them up but we won't have the switches so basically we're going to basically get rid of them basically is what we're going to do and just got them right so that's today's progress we're going to move the heater switches we're going to wire up the headlights and then we're going to uh, with a Bosch relay okay so one more time 30 is power 87a is normally closed and 87 is normally open which means power goes in here comes out here if you got this the relay on power goes in here comes out here these two 85 and 86 are the power wires for the solenoid in there now these if you look on the back side of them you'll see and it'll say 20 to 30 amp or 40 or 50 or whatever. I think you can get them up to about 60. But we're only drawing 15 and 20. So that's 30 amps. So this is more than enough. More than what we want. Plus you put in LED headlights. Which draw virtually nothing now. But the reason we're. One of the biggest reasons we're doing this. Is because the daytime running lights on here. What they do is they take a power wire. Run it through um, the high beam in series which brings the power down that's but on the led the power is so low that it flickers and it's annoying so i said that's the first thing that goes is them annoying headlights <laughs> so now he will have his low beams on or his high beams he can work whatever when you turn the key off there's no lights on and you turn the key on you have lights now if he wants lights on with the key off we'll think about it but i don't think he'll ever will so because usually you never have a, um, the lights on because it kills the battery. So why would you put them on with the engine not running, right? That's my theory behind it. I'm not saying it's right, but it sure works for me. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, it's fixed. Marker lights are on. Here, just 
one sec. Marker lights. Okay, so we put marker. See the marker lights are on now, right? Uh, yep, marker lights are on. Okay, now you turn the switch off. No marker lights and no headlights. Look at that. Yeah, eh? uh, let's see. Yep, no headlights. Look at that, eh? <laughs> headlights. It's when a plan comes together. My sure does. Goodness. Now I'm going to take this one out to show you guys. He just put a little flat thing. Blade, but blade connector. And that goes right back in here at the top. Yeah, and then we put this go. on here. This is such a good system. You combine the two wires. Kind of. Now this is going to run both them, right? So I put this wire on here, and now I want to control this, so I put it on 87, which is the same as the other ones, right? And then I take this one here, which is, uh, this is the ground wire, no, that's a, this is a ground wire, which I put on 87, right? And then I put this on, uh, this will be my power wire, so I'll that's, cut this one that's, off. For now. That's power, it's coming off of uh, the little yeah, but power that's thing there. Ignition power, right? Oh, okay. I don't want ignition power, right? No, that's 12 volt power. I got it. Okay. So that's 12 volt power, so I put that in here. Right? So now, right now, you won't have, see, I got it hooked up, and see, you have no lights, right? Yeah. Right? You have no lights. Yeah. So now we take and put the trigger wire. I use purple because, you know, that's my favorite color. <laughs> so every wire in this thing's going to be purple. No, I'm just kidding. So we put a power wire here. And I know Z-Max, just wait. I'm going to put fuses in it. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm going to put fuses in it, Z-Max. So don't fret on me, okay? I'm just showing you how this works. I'm going to put in a 25, which is ignition. Okay. And then we're going to put that on to... The relay. So now we got the relay all hooked up. We have no, we have the the headlight switches off right now, but you'll see the keys off. Okay. Now this one's going to go on 86, right? Right here. So this is how it works right here. Now, for some reason, if you want something on, like uh, just say you want something on, we have power here. Right, going in here, and we, and C87A, now if I put a, the test light on there, with the key off, everything off, we have power coming out that terminal. Because that's what I call normally, normally closed, right? This is normally open, no power. This is normally closed, that's got power. No power, no power, power. And it's norm, that's what we call normally closed. So... It's a long thing, but say you want to turn your headlights on and you want to turn your marker lights off or you want to leave a dome light on, you turn your headlights off and leave the dome light on. You can do anything, whatever you want. Normally close, normally light. That's how a Bosch relay works. Okay, now watch this. Now watch this. I'm going to go turn the ignition on. As you notice, there's no lights on right now. Yeah. And here's the, uh, this is a light switch here for everybody. Just it is currently this. in the for, off position. Okay, we're going to turn the lights on. There's no lights on, is there? Correct. There's no lights on. Are you ready for this, sports fans? Yep. Are you ready for this? It's on. Oh, it's on. <laughs> and go check the headlights. <laughs> huh? I'm telling you, it's a good day in Canada. <laughs> we got working lights. Okay, now watch it. Watch it. Okay, now I'm going to turn the headlights off. The marker lights are still on. Right? The marker lights are still on. And then I turn the marker lights off. Everything's off, right? Yep. Everything's on. Wow. Look at that. Nothing's on. That's great. So basically, Isn't I could never. That a great system. Yeah. Isn't it just so exciting, Jack. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> well, I really like that system because I've already forgot to turn the lights off uh, in the Ford. You know, when you open the door, dings and stuff like that. First of you all, there's never, no door. You'll never have a dead battery again <laughs> by leaving your lights exactly. on. Exactly. So that's that's a really nice uh, trick there. So. Just, this is for Sue. All this right. This is for Sue Girling. I did this just for her. <laughs> and you check and make sure that this fuse here is not blowing, right? This uh, blue one, which we're going to put a fuse. We haven't got no fuse in it right now. So we're going to put a fuse in here, 30 amp fuse in here. And then this one here, we'll put... Well, we don't really need one because it's not a delivery, so it doesn't really need a fuse, this one. All we, and then we'll put two on these here. These are going to the lights, right? Now, 
they're going to say, well, what the hell? That's a fuse coming in. There's two wires missing. These are the wires from the switch. We don't care about them. We don't need those because we're putting power on the wire here. This terminal runs from here to the switch, right? So we don't need them. So they're just done. And this is the thing in there. That so you, you took out two of these fuses and then replaced them yeah, with these. Yeah, we're going to put the fuses in here instead, right? Easy. Because you can't. I don't like the fuse tops because you put this in here. How are you going to get the wire in there, right? Yeah. Because I want this terminal, right? Yeah. You can put a fuse top. I don't like them. And now we'll put two fuses in here, two fuse holders. We've got one right here. Oh, yeah, we have lots of extras. And we'll just put the fuse holder in the, in the power wire, which is uh, this one right here. Great. So we'll just put this in the power wire, and Bob's your uncle. So, um, we're just going to show you how it works now. The headlight switch is on. All right, headlights are on. Keys on. Keys are now on. Headlights on, marker lights on. Headlights on and marker lights on. Headlights off. Headlights off. Marker lights off. Marker lights off. That was the uh, that one up there. Marker lights on. Marker lights Headlights are back on. on. Yep. All right. Cool. It works. Good job, dude. So High five. Over here. We got the relay hooked in with the power wire. This is number thirty. Terminal 30 with a 30 amp fuse. This is now the reason for the two wires is I know a couple guys are going to say, Why can you do that? Because we're on the power side. We are sending the power to the switch. So that's why we can just use one wire, not two. Okay, this is the purple wire goes into the ignition and that's what it runs. Now, like I said, if this screws up, the relay screws up or something, you don't have headlights. Pull these two wires out and put two fuses back in, you're back to normal. Okay, so we're moving the switches on the side, right? Now, I know a lot of people are not going to agree with me, but that's all right because I never asked you. But the thing is, is that we're looking for blue, red, and black. And if you look in here, we don't have none of that color. But we have a ton of this wire. So... I'm thinking we're going to do a lot of orange. It looks blue and black and red to me. <laughs> so we're going to use this to extend them wires over. And what we're doing is cutting the plug off where it goes. We're going to cut the plug off here. Okay, we're going to cut the plug off and we're going to extend these wires right here. These wires, the black wires, the purple and white I'm picking up right here. They're already there. So we don't have to extend them. Just these two wires. So we're going to use that orange wire and extend them all. Jack's bus, he just has to remember that. So when it plugs in here, it'll be red and blue. And when it plugs in the switch, it'll be red and blue. So it shouldn't really cause an issue. So we're, just, add it, so we're just adding in like an extension cord to the extension wires. Extension cord to the wire, exactly yep. what we're doing. I think we might have enough block to do it, but red is going to be orange and gray is going to be orange. All right. I'm colorblind today. <laughs> We're using all the same wires, right? So what you do is tedious, but you do them one at a time. Now everybody's saying, what the hell is he using? Okay, these are what they call non-insulated connectors. They're twice as thick, and no, you can't get them through. The cheap stuff is cheap, but these are good ones, and they're double thickness and everything else. And what we do is we cut the line, we use a, either these or a pair of clines, and you squash them right down tight, right? And then you put on a shrink tubing, and then you go to the other end. Okay, so we're on the bus end, right? So there's, we've done the blue and the red, and then you trim the wire, right? You stick it in the connector. You crimp the living daylights out of it, like you're trying to push a piece of spaghetti through a mailbox key. And then you put the shrink on, and then you use a torch, and you shrink it. Now this will keep it all sealed, but you have to make sure, we're not worried about water because it's inside. But you see that? You cut all these, and the amazing thing is you can cut all, 
all the wires the same length. You don't have to measure them, right? So all we have to do is a block one now. We got, and you do one wire at a time, and that way you don't screw it up. Well, the, on the heater wire, all it's going to do is change the speeds, that's all. But the power wire will do a big thing, but it's blocked, right? So we got the two done, so now all we have to do is carry on and keep doing it. So he went and bought this the other day. Look at that, isn't that a cool system? If you're wondering how he's getting these cool shots. <laughs> Look at that, eh? Yeah. Look at that, it's almost the same thing. are hard to grind so definitely don't overdo it if you uh, want it to be flat afterwards all right this right here is the heater in the front um, there were hoses coming out here as you can see a little water leaked out but hose popped out here popped out there and basically this was so that the water comes in here then it goes out it was all connected to the rear heater so basically what we did is we took one of the hoses out. We removed this hose. And so this was the exhaust valve. And so we just took it on the exhaust part of this radiator here, this heater part, this heater core, and just put it back to where that one was. So water comes in and loops. Just like on that side, the water goes in and loops. Down in the dirt. 